Hello, my name is Howard Breyer and I'm a volunteer tour guide in Miami Beach. I've been doing that for 10 years. I do various walking tours for the Miami Design Preservation League and the Jewish Museum of Florida. Uh, today I have a short uh, slideshow video about one particular building in Miami Beach. Uh, it's located at 675 to 685 Washington Avenue in the South Beach neighborhood. Uh, prior to being a walking tour guide, I was a budget analyst at the Federal Department of Education in Washington, D.C. for 33 years. Uh, if you'd like, check out my other videos based on my walking tours in Miami Beach. I hope you enjoy the presentation. So here is the building. It's on the southeast corner of 7th Street and Washington Avenue. The entire block was made up of multiple commercial one-story buildings. The focus of the talk is on the northernmost building of the block. This one building had multiple storefronts. I'll mention some, though not all, of the businesses that were located here over the years. The building was erected in 1934. It's an exa early example of Art Deco architecture in Miami Beach of course, the style of architecture most associated with the city. The architect was E.L. Robertson of the architecture firm Robertson and Patterson. Here's another building designed by E.L. Robertson, what was originally the Washington Storage Company, now the Wolfsonian Museum of Art, located at 10th Street and Washington Avenue. It was built in 1927. The same architect designed the Netherland Hotel in 1935, located at 1330 Ocean Drive. Here are close-ups of the Netherland Hotel and the building on Washington Avenue we're looking at. Note that he used the same fluted column design on both buildings. Here is a picture of when the building housed the Paddock Club, a burlesque house. It was located here from 1934 until 1954 under various names, Paddock Bar and Grill, Charlie's Paddock Bar, and the Paddock Club. It was rumored to be a hangout for Al Capone, who had a vacation house in Miami Beach, and also for many bookies. Bookmaking was a big illegal activity in Miami Beach during this era. Louis Pearl, also known as Babe Silvers, was one of the operators of the Paddock Club. Several years after the Paddock closed, on January 23, 1960, he attended the grand opening of the Chi Chi Club, another strip joint. It was the last time he was seen. On April 9, 1961, a year later, a bag of bones was found in a small pond in North Miami. The remains were found to be those of Pearl, an obvious victim of a gangland slaying. The Beach Toggery, a clothing store, was located in part of the building from 1935 until 1940. During a recent renovation of the building to turn it into the Good Time Hotel Complex, which I'll talk about more later, the lettering for the store was uncovered. Unfortunately, in the final restoration, the name is no longer on display. I think it would have been nice if they left the Beach Toggery sign showing. In 1954, when the Paddock Club closed, another strip joint took over, the Paper Dog Club. It was only open for two years until 1956. From 1965 until 1986, Friedman's Bakery was located here. It was a kosher bakery reflecting the high Jewish population in Miami Beach at the time. In that era, Miami Beach was about 60% Jewish. South Beach, where the building is located, was about 80% Jewish. Leonard Horowitz was heavily involved in the early days of the preservation movement in Miami Beach, which started in the mid-1970s. 
He had the idea that if the buildings were painted multiple colors and the architectural details highlighted, more people would appreciate the buildings and thus help the preservation movement. In the 1980s, he oversaw the painting of many buildings. He used a specific color palette pictured here. Over time, Miami Beach became noted for these colorful buildings. The first building he oversaw the painting of was Friedman's Bakery. His colors are on the right. The building was featured on the cover of Progressive Architecture magazine in November 1982 and helped raise the visibility of Miami Beach Art Deco architecture and with the economic revitalization of the city which was just underway. The colors were later picked up by the TV show Miami Vice, greatly increasing the profile of Miami Beach. Miami Vice did a lot of shooting on location in Miami Beach. For the October 25th, 1985 episode, Friedman's Bakery was transformed into Dynamo. Only the exterior of the building was used in the shooting. When the actors went inside, it was actually shot at the Fire and Ice Club in Miami. In the 1990s through the early 2000s, there was a large turnover of establishments in the building, especially of clubs and restaurants. This was when South Beach was revitalizing. Business people were ready to invest as the area was becoming more popular. A New York Times article of the time led off by saying, the story of Miami Beach's nightlife can read like a celebrity gossip blog where the latest it destination is always calculatingly glamorous, addictively catchy, and notoriously short-lived. Just follow the spotlights and you're likely to find a glittery grand opening. One of the restaurants was the WPA in the picture located here from 1992 through 1994. One of the clubs was the Goddess Nightclub from 1999 to 2004. The club featured luxurious decorations, including what looked like a Hindu temple and a gold female statue in the picture on the right that doubled as an immense incense burner. Other businesses located here in that era included Heathrow Lounge, Water Gun, Six Degrees, and Club Empire. From 2009 to 2018, this was the site of Manolo Restaurant, serving Argentinian food. It was a family-owned restaurant, first founded in Burgos, Spain in 1930. The family emigrated to Montevideo, Uruguay, and opened a number of restaurants in South America. Today, there are branches in Argentina and at 7300 Collins Avenue in Miami Beach. In 2021, the Good Time Hotel opened on the 600 block of Washington Avenue. One of the owners is Pharrell Williams. Only the facades of the older commercial buildings were kept and the new building was erected behind and above the old facades. The building we have been talking about is in the lower left-hand corner of the block with the round structure depicted. Here is a close-up of the previous picture focusing on 675 to 685 Washington Avenue. And finally, here is a picture of the building as it exists today after the renovation and construction of the Good Time Hotel complex. This part of the building is currently unoccupied and awaiting new commercial tenants with a new color scheme. So I'd like to thank you for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Take care.